We are underway as the Shockers win the opening tip. It'll be Duran taking it across the timeline for Wichita State, guarded by Clinton. Over on the right wing now, it's Mayo defending. Up to the top of the key, over on the near side, it's Duncan. Duncan flips it to the top of the key, Bremo. Bremo now doubled by Davis, she squirts to the right side, loses the ball, it's taken away by Mayo. Mayo takes it along the far side, up to the three point line, she'll slow things down. Gordine on the near side on the right wing, defended by Bremo. Slowing things down, 18 on the shot clock. Calling out the play is Gordine. Gets it to Davis, all alone on the right side. She'll get a pick from Williamson. Back to Gordine, they swing it around to East on the far wing. East of the cop of the key to Davis, driving to the right side. She'll float it up off the front rim, no good. Yeah. Taken in by Strong. Now a long outlet pass ahead. And it was intended for Duncan, or was intended for Asinde, and she was fouled on the play. That was good defense right there by Gordain, though jumping up, unfortunately, the foul cost her a little bit. And now the Shockers roll inbound from underneath their offensive basket. 9.03 to go here in the opening quarter of play. Still no score. Now the referee's over talking with the scorer's table. The first team foul of the quarter on Temple. They didn't stop the shot clock on that one. So they're discussing where oh, the shot right. clock Oh, you're right. Shot clock still at 13. The Shockers really only had the ball for about two seconds. So Two and a half, maybe. Two and a half. <laughs> maybe three. We'll round up a little bit. But the officials trying to sort that out is fans still piling in. McGonagall Hall holds a capacity of 3,900. We're not quite there yet, but I think it's certainly a better atmosphere than you'd normally see. And that's really all out of respect for Mia Davis. And even, I think, for this team, too. I think the, the women's team has been... Kind of like the red-headed stepchild of a lot of Temple sports. It's been winning games. It's been having winning records, but it just hasn't been had it's like some of the big success that it needs, I think, to get more noticed. And now the officials have sorted everything out. Duran will inbound underneath her own basket for the Shockers. Bounce pass inside. They kick it out to the corner. And now up top with it is Duncan. She'll get it over to Duran on the right side, defended by Gordine. Duran doubled now by Davis, a strong double, pushes her back near the logo. They get it out to the opposite corner. It's Duncan for three, and that's good. Nice passing by the Shockers to take a three to nothing lead with 8.55 to go in the quarter. They were trying to abuse Duncan there. The freshman's only got her second start. However, the Spaniard held up well. Mayo on the near side, a 2-3 zone for the Shockers. They swing it around up top to Gordine. Thrice to throw it to the near side to Mayo. It's knocked out of bounds by Duncan, and the Owls will get it sideline out of bounds. They're really going to try to use the shot clock here, I think, for the Owls. They're really digging down deep in those last few seconds before they make any shot attempt. They've been patient. They were patient on their first possession, brought it all the way down to the shot clock buzzer. Now the officials back over to the scores table. Maybe another issue with the shot clock. One of the officials very adamant that something is wrong as we've got our second stoppage for what presumably is the clock at this point in the game, just a minute and 19 seconds into the first quarter. They now put 16 up on the shot clock. The starting fives for each team, it's Tiara East, Anaya Gordine, Amani Mayo, Alexa Williamson, and Mia Davis for the Owls. And on the Shocker side, it's Asia Strong, Nook Bosch Duran, Carla Brimo, Shamariah Duncan, and Jane Asinde. It looks like we're finally ready to get underway. The official bounces the ball, hands it off to Mayo, and she'll inbound to Gordine. Over to Davis on the wing for three. That shot is off no good. Davis 0 for 2 to start tonight. And now it's Duren pushing it the other way. Duren across the timeline, standing at the top of the key, sends it over to the far side. Duncan with it. Flips off to Asinde. She'll drive, gets into the lane, puts up a short jumper, and it rolls around and in. The Shockers now lead 5-0 with 8.15 to go in the first quarter. Yeah, Williamson was expecting help from the wing, but they were too anxious about a three-point shot going down. Into the corner, it's East. She'll bring it back out to Gordine. They swing it to the near side. Mayo, Amani Mayo, a long three-pointer. That's off the back rim, no good. Picked up, and the layup is missed by East. And then she grabs her own rebound, and she's fouled on the floor. Two minutes into this game, the Owls still without a bucket. And now... They keep the foul on the floor. It looked like East thought she was going to the line. She walked up to the charity stripe. And now the Owls will inbound under their own basket. It'll be Gordine. It's a cold start, 0-4 from the field. Gordine smacks the ball. 
Tries to get it in deep to Williamson. It's knocked away from her momentarily. And now it is taken away. And now, bodies on the floor. It'll be a jump ball. That'll keep things with the Owls. I think a little bit of the experience there from Gordine. Like, she was trying to get it to Williamson, trying to do the right thing, but just didn't put it up where she could only get it. Gordine again will be the inbounder. Looking for Williamson. She's cut off. Gordine will just float it back to the three-point line. Davis has it. Drives to the middle. She'll put it up. She's fouled. And she missed the shot, but she'll go to the line for two free throws, looking to get Temple on the board for the first time today. You know the saying, like, you can't get the lid off the basket. I don't even think the basket wants the ball right now. <laughs> it's, it's, it has bounced three or four different ways on the Owls. Davis's first free throw rattles home. She is now four points away from overtaking Marilyn Stevens for the top spot in Temple women's basketball scoring history. And Wichita State should be careful about fouling her. She has 75% free throws, and she's one of the highest attempt rates right now in the American Conference. So don't foul Mia Davis is the simple answer to that one. Davis certainly a threat from all over the floor. She leaves the second free throw short. It's a 5-1 to one Shockers lead with 7.40 to go. Coming back from right to left, driving into the lane, pulling up is Bremo for the mid-range jumper. That's short, no good. Rebounded by Gordine. She outlets it ahead to East, and East will bring it across the timeline. East over to Gordine, guarded by Asinde. They hand it off for Williamson, flips it off to Mayo on the far side. She drops it off her leg, goes to get it, and now she'll bring it back out. Swings it to East, over to the near corner. It's Gordine. She'll drive to the baseline. She looked like she might have been tripped up on the way there. Her shot was blocked out of bounds by Duncan, and the Owls will keep possession with six on the shot clock. Hard to foul, too. She gets up, shakes it off, and that's good, but it was a hard, hard fall. You can hurt it all the way from up here. <laughs> Six on the shot clock. Gordine looking to inbound. Gets it inside to Williamson. Again, a tough catch. It's dropped and picking it up. Going the other way is Duran. Duran all the way. Oh! She's swatted by Williamson. Oh, a rejection. Alexa Williamson with a chase down block sends it out of bounds. The Shockers will retain possession, but the Owls get some momentum. Try to send that ball out of this place and down Broad Street. <laughs> a strong rejection, and now the Shockers inbound. Driving into the lane, that was Duncan. She hands it off for Asinde. Her short shot is air ball. Picked up by Gordine. She'll take it back the other way. The Owls moving from left to right. Mayo on the far wing. Looking for Davis in the post. Gets it to her. Davis drives baseline, spins. Kicks to Gordine, top of the key for three. And that's good! <laughs> The first field goal of the night for Temple. It's now five to four, Wichita State, with 6.40 to go in the first quarter. Didn't take much, but there's a little bit more energy in this building after that block. Duran driving middle, cut off by Davis, kicks it back out to Strong. Strong tries to go baseline, guarded by Gordine. Back out to Duran, driving, floats it up, off the backboard, no good. Rebound to Asinde, and she puts it up and in. The Owls have to be wary of that. Number one team in the AAC on offensive rebounds right now. They got it. Box out. The Shockers lead seven to four, just over six minutes to go in the opening period. Gordine gets it down low for Davis, struggles with the catch, she'll put it up and bank it in. The Owls trail now seven to six, but more importantly, Mia Davis two points away from setting the all-time points record in Temple women's basketball history. Yeah, this, the passing has been an issue for the Owls. This just hasn't been crisp and clean. Mia had to take a moment to gather it. Over on the far wing, it's Duran kicking it up to Bremo. Bremo, top of the key, sends it down low, is Strong. Strong will turn, she'll face up, she'll put it up off the back rim, no good. Rebound bounces right back to her at the free throw line. She kicks to Duran, she'll step into a three, that's off the back rim, no good. Brought in by Williamson as she's pushed out of bounds by Strong, and a foul. The second foul of the quarter for the Shockers, who lead seven to six with five and a half to go here in the opening quarter. Jaysha Clinton enters the game now for Anaya Gordine, her first action of the night. And that's a substitution definitely for the Owls to get some more shooters in there. Let's see if they feed Davis. One field goal away from the record. East up to Davis, top of the key. She swings it over to the far side, Clinton. Clinton gets it back up to Williams and swings it to the near side, East. The Owls taking their time against the zone. On the far side, it's Imani Mayo, puts up a three. Off the rim, no good. Rebound bounces out where it's taken by Bremo. A long outlet pass knocked away by Mayo out of bounds. The only thing standing between Asinde and the ball was Amani Mayo. She made a great play there to keep the Shockers off the board. Now, Wichita State doesn't have a football team. However, they have two quarterback-like passes already in this first quarter. 
They're looking for the long outlet passes early. Maybe it's something they saw in the scouting report, but the Owls have been able to get back on a few of them. Now at the free throw line, driving inside, putting it up and in. It's a scene day against Davis. Inbounding it from the baseline out of bounds. The scene day caught it at the elbow, took it to the hoop, and she puts the Shockers ahead nine to six with a free throw upcoming under five minutes to go in the opening quarter. And Tanya Cardoza calls the first timeout of the night for Temple. Yeah, it's been a solid first quarter, I think, for both teams in terms of defense. On the offensive side, it's been rough. You can see there's some Wichita State Shockers that have some confidence up there. Durant has had all sorts of confidence walking up to the line and shooting. Just nothing's fallen for her. And on the defensive side for the Owls, Mia's looking for more help down low. And that's immediately what I think she was talking about in the huddle right before the timeout was called. Like, hey, I need help down low. That is a big team we're facing in Wichita State. And it looks like Wichita State with their size, they're also sort of game planning down there. We saw the Owls try to feed Alexa Williamson a few times, and there were just two or three shockers on her at all times. It's opened up some looks. Imani Mayo's had some shots out there, and Aya Gordine hit a three from the top of the key. So the Owls are just going to have to make them pay, and that's really what teams are going to do to Temple this year. They only shoot 24% from beyond the arc, so they're going to have to knock down shots when teams game plan for them to have those looks. And I'm waiting to see what Wichita State does with their substitutions. We haven't seen Ella Ancio, but like she is a big 6'4 center, and she is very good in these situations where it's a lot of close scoring, a lot of inside buckets. When they space the floor, she just hasn't been getting the looks, hasn't been getting the minutes. But a game like today, where you're going to have a lot of aggression inside, I look for number 13, I think. Make, look for that sub from Wichita State. And we've seen Wichita State a couple of times now just going hard to the basket, trying to draw fouls. They finally did on that last play with a scene day going to the basket. But we know Asia Strong, 6'2", senior, another person of major size for the Shockers. And you already mentioned Asino. As we have the cheerleaders out on the court now during this timeout, 4.58 to go in the first quarter. Shockers lead the Owls 9-6. And just a reminder, Mia Davis just two points away from the all-time women's scoring record in Temple basketball history. Marilyn Stevens sits with 2,194. Mia Davis currently at 2,193. And Davis does come back out into the court. She's joined by Jaysha Clinton, Tiara East, and Alexa Williams in the fifth owl, not out on the court yet. But mostly starters as Imani Mayo wanders her way onto the court. The Shocker's still in the huddle for the timeout. So we'll see if the Owls have any adjustments here going forward. They have they haven't shot very well. The Shockers haven't shot great either, but they're one for two from beyond, and that's kind of separated us, as, and that's really where we're at right now. I think, if anything, you have to be mad about the offensive rebounds, and you have to know, at, look at the scouting report, you have the number one offensive rebound team in Wichita State. We're only seven minutes in, not even seven minutes, five minutes in, and, we've only, and you've given up three offensive rebounds, resulting in, Half of those Wichita State points being second chance points. I think that was the main thing. And the other thing was just help inside for Mia Davis. There's just not been a lot there so far. And you're looking at a Temple team that starts a 6-1 Alexa Williamson, a six-foot Mia Davis there. Usually a team that has size, and they think they could take advantage on that end. But you are completely right. Wichita State has much more size, and they know how to use it. They have, they have it on the bench. They have it in the starting lineup. So it's something that Temple's just going to have to game plan for. And as the timeout winds down, it's Jane Asinde stepping to the line. The Shockers lead 9-6, to 4.58 to go here in the first quarter. Asinde takes a couple of dribbles and knocks down the free throw. The 65% free throw shooter puts the Shockers ahead 10-6. to 6, And now the Owls come the other way, going from left to right in their white uniforms. Clinton brings it to the near side, finds Mayo at the top of the key. She'll flip it to the opposite corner, it's east. Driving in, flips it back to Davis. She'll drive on the far baseline, put it up, no call. She might have been fouled. The ball bounces off her out of bounds. It'll go back to the Shockers. I think she had the right intention there. She was the one guiding all the traffic, guiding East, guiding Williamson, trying to create an opening. Just that, unfortunately, the finish came up short. Now back the other way is Duren for the Shockers. Gets it to the near side, Duncan. They go down low. Into the game now is Colbert for the first time. Asine driving, goes right through Williamson, puts it up, it's a charge. 
Asinde tried to drive to the basket for the second straight possession, but this time it's Alexa Williamson stepping in and taking the charge. And it's a good thing that charge was called too because you're looking at Wichita State, seven of the 10 points have come from Asinde. Well, 35 needs to be stopped and that's the best way to do it. Get some fouls, force her to rest, and get some points on your side. Clinton will bring it ahead. 4.20 to go in the first quarter. Owls trail 10 to six. Perea into the game, a near side three, and that's good. Karanda Perea, the Owls sniper on the season. A team high 36% from beyond. Knocks down her first three of the game. It's 10 to nine, Wichita State. And both these two teams are not great from three point range. So any advantage they can get up beyond the arc, that's gonna favor the winning team later on in this game. Duncan on the far wing, defended by Perea. Brimo now has it, gets it over. It's Colbert on the far side, defended by Davis. Finds a scene day, gets to the free throw line. Her short jumper's blocked by Williamson. She grabs the rebound and throws it up and in. A wild shot from a scene day. Puts the Shockers ahead 12 to nine. Look at the tenacity of number 35, a scene day. Like she got blocked, got her own rebound and just put it right back up there. Like that was some great stuff from her. Amani Mayo on the far side finds Clinton. Clinton to the corner, it's Perea. Another three, that one's off the back rim and out. The rebound taken in by Duren. Back the other way come the Shockers, going from right to left. Duren guarded by Clinton at the top of the key, sends it over to Duncan on the far wing. Duncan to Colbert, surveying her options, top of the key, swings it to the near side. Duren, she'll drive to the left, cut into the lane, flip it off for a scene day. She's blocked from behind by Mayo. Rebound bounces out to Duncan in the corner. They go right back to a scene day in the post. She'll drop step, step through her layup is missed. Rebound bounces into the hands of Williamson. Clinton takes it back the other way down the right side. Looking for an outlet, gets it down to Davis. Davis into the lane for the record, she's got it! Mia Davis has just become the all-time points leader in Temple women's basketball history. A timeout is taken on the floor. Davis mobbed by her teammates in front of her own bench. Davis took it across the paint. The right-handed layup is what puts her in the history books. Mia Davis, 2,196 points. The crowd at McGonagall Hall rises to their feet. Mia Davis honored over the public address speaker. Standing just in front of the three point line in front of the Owls bench. Giving a nice wave to the crowd with her teammates cheering her on. A moment that will be remembered forever in Temple women's basketball history as Mia Davis passes Marilyn Stevens as the all-time career points leader in Temple women's basketball history. And you have to believe that 25 is going to be right next to 33 at some point up above in McGonagall Hall. There's only two numbers that are up there, 4 and 33, and you have to think in a couple of years we're going to be hanging 25. Certainly sooner rather than later, Mia Davis has been a mainstay for this Temple team. One of the best players in Owls history. She was named AAC Preseason Player of the Year. She was the only unanimous all AAC first team selection. It's her fourth season in a row leading the team in scoring. And the year before that, she was second. Mia Davis came into today with seven 20 point performances in her last eight games. Coming off a big five player of the week. None of this is new for Mia Davis. She is used to the accomplishments, used to the spotlight, and she finally tops it off by becoming the all-time scoring leader in Temple women's basketball history. Back to the game, the Owls trail 12 to 11. Up top, they try and get it to Duran. It's stolen by Clinton, a breakaway layup, and she puts it in. Jaysha Clinton going from right to left, puts the Owls ahead 13 to 12 with just over two minutes to go in the first quarter. Duran walking it the other way across the logo, finds Duncan on the far side. She'll pull a deep three. That's off the front rim, no good. Taken in by Williamson. Clinton pushing the pace the other way down the right side. Clinton in the corner, gets it up to Davis. Davis swings it over to Mayo on the far side. To the opposite corner, it's Perea. Kicking it out to Mayo. They swing to the near side. Clinton trying to get it down low to Davis. It's knocked away by Colbert. 1.45 to go in the first quarter. The Owls lead 13-12. Duran up top, guarded closely by Clinton, forces her to pick up her dribble. Duran gets to Colbert, back to Duran on the far wing. She'll drive to the right side against Clinton, stops, pulls up, and hits a short jumper. Pretty move from Duran. 
to put the Shockers ahead 14 to 13. You have to admire the confidence of, of the freshman. Like she's thrown up three or four shots, that's her first make, and yet she's still having the confidence every time. And now coming back the other way, it's Jaysha Clinton called for the double dribble. It'll go back the other way for the Shockers. Melissa Secchioli enters for the Shockers. And Anaya Gordin re-enters the game for Jaysha Clinton. Under 80 seconds to go here in the opening quarter of play. The Shockers lead the Owls 14 to 13. Secchioli on the far side, gets it down low. Colbert against Williamson, steps through, left-handed layup, no good, grabs her own rebound. Her shot is blocked by Williamson. And now Williamson looks to be a bit hurt on the play. Now a three-pointer is up and good for Duran. An offensive rebound that was blocked. Then they kick it back out to Duran for the three to put the Shockers ahead, 17 to 13. 45 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Davis, they swing it all the way around to the opposite corner. Perea's three, hits off the front of the rim, no good, and it's put back in by Mia Davis on the rebound. Wichita State leads 17 to 15, 30 seconds to go in the first quarter, about a six second difference with the shot clock and game clock. Secchioli on at the top of the key, gets it to Colbert at the elbow. Back to Secchioli on the far side. Gets it to, to Duran at the top of the key. She'll drive to the left. Gives it off to Colbert, driving baseline, and she traveled on her way there. Colbert tried to take Williamson baseline. She traveled. And now Alexa Williamson will head to the bench as Kyra Wood will get her first minutes of the night. Now moving ahead. Gordeen gets it to Mayo. Mayo to the free throw line. Opposite wing, Perea for three. It's good! Karanda Perea knocks down a three to put the Owls ahead. And that will end our first quarter. An 18 to 17 lead for Temple, thanks to the three pointer from Karanda Perea, her second of the quarter. And that will take a short break here after the first period of play. It's the Owls 18 and the Shockers 17. Hello and welcome back to McGonagall Hall for the second quarter of play for this broadcast of Temple Women's Basketball. It's the Temple Owls taking on the Wichita State Shockers. The Owls led after one, 18 to 17, and Mia Davis broke the all-time points record in Temple Women's Basketball history, passing Marilyn Stevens with a short layup on the right side. And we're about to get underway here in period number two. The Shockers have possession heading from right to left in their black uniforms. It's Duran bringing it ahead, guarded by Gordeen. Gets it to Duncan on the left elbow, dribbles to the right side, puts up a jumper, that's no good. Rebound knocked away from Davis, but taken in by Gordeen. That was a much better effort at getting that defensive rebound. There was four Owls down there, making sure no Shocker got a chance. Over to Perea on the near side, Owls going from left to right. Far side, it's Mayo now. Now they get it to the far corner, it's Perea. Short jumper is good. Had a step inside the two, inside the three point line. It's a two for Perea. And the Owls lead 20 to 17 with 9.20 in the first quarter, second quarter. And she's been the offensive spark. She leads the uh, team in points. She's three for five, two for four from three point. Uh, that's the offense you need. Driving into the lane and blocked. It was Boudin on the far block. And now going the other way is Gordine. Gets to the corner, it's Mayo. Davis with it up top to the near side, Perea. Perea dribbles to the top of the key, swings it over to Gordine on the far side. Over to Mayo on the near side, an open three is up, and it's off the front of the rim, no good. Brought in by Wood. She puts it up and in, and a foul! Kyra Wood, her first point of the night on the offensive rebound and put back. The Owls lead 22 to 17 with 8.49 in the second quarter. And that's, and that's a message, I think, to Wichita State saying, we have a lot of guys on the bench that can come in and get offensive rebounds too. You need not to worry, Don't we'll keep up with you on the boards. And now an immediate response from the Shockers putting back in Jaina Sinde, who seemingly dominated down low in that opening period. As Woods' free throw is up off the back rim, no good. Back the other way comes Duren for the Shockers, trailing by five. Guarded tightly by Mayo on the far wing. Trying to shake Mayo, it's Duren with the left hand dribble, spins back to the right side, tries to kick to the corner, that one's knocked away, nearly stolen but it deflects off a Shocker's foot and out of bounds. It'll go to the Owls. 
Nice defensive play by Gordine to get her hand in the passing lane. Gordine felt like she got lucky there because she felt like she was the last one that touched it. That's what it looked like from this angle, and now Gordine will be the one bringing it across the timeline for the Owls on the near side now, guarded by Duren. Tries to get it up to Perea. That's knocked away by Duncan for the Shockers. She'll bring it the other way, drives to the basket, puts it up over Perea and in. A tough finish from Duncan to cut the Temple lead to three with 8.10 to go in the second quarter. The, just the amount of strength inside Wichita State has right now with Duncan and Cindy out there, there was nothing Perea could do but just stand there and hope for the best. To the far corner, it's Davis for three, and that's good. Mia Davis, her first three-pointer of the night, only her sixth on the season, extends the Owls lead to six. It's 25-19 Temple with 7.50 to go in the quarter. She's made her last four baskets in a row. Duran driving, knocked away and stolen by Gordine. She'll take it along the near side now. Gordine crosses over into the lane. Scoop shot is no good. Offensive rebound to Wood. She puts it up no good. And the rebound is taken by the Shockers. And an over the back foul is called on Amani Mayo in her pursuit of the rebound. Now entering the game for the Sock Shockers. Ella Asina for the first time tonight. And Carla Brimo re-enters the game for Wichita State. Karanda Perea gets a much-deserved break. Eight points off the bench quickly for Temple. She's replaced by Tiara East. And Jaysha Clinton now comes in for Imani Mayo. Getting some fresh legs out there with 7.36 to go in the second quarter. The Owls lead 25 to 19. And a quick change for the Wichita State Shockers. Uh, Plot Nuva out there as well, the young Russian guard. So got two smaller guards and Duncan and Platanuva outside. Duran gets it down to Asinde. Her short shot is missed. She grabs the offensive rebound. Kicks it out. Top of the key. Straight on three for Platanova's off the back rim. No good. Three Owls boxing out and coming away with it is Gordine pushing the other way. Gets to Clinton on the near side. Her three-pointer's up. No good. Offensive rebound Gordine. She puts it back up. Air balls it. Taken in by Asinde. Her pass is picked off by Gordine, but she misses the layup. And now it's the Shockers bringing it in. It's Brimo on the near side, and her coach will have her slow it down. The point guard, Duren, comes to get it, trying to settle things down for the Shockers. Guarded closely by Gordine on the Temple logo. Duren, left-hand dribble, drives to the left side, cut off by Davis, trying to hand it off now to Platanova. She's double-teamed. Now driving now, the near side is Brimo. Her jump shot from the elbow is blocked by Wood. Pushing it the other way is East. He spins into the lane, left-handed layup off the backboard and rim, no good. A pretty move from East, but the finish wasn't there. When I mean, you can hear the oohs and ahs of the crowd, though, it sounds like there's definitely more people here than what we can hold. Duran over to Asinde on the near side. Back up to Platanova. Driving, kicks to Duran. Duran on the far wing, guarded closely by Clinton. Gets a screen from Asinde, now she's doubled, dips it off to Asinde, driving to the right side, hop steps into the lane, flips it up and in, nice finish from Asinde. It's now 25 to 21, Temple, with 5.50 to go in the second quarter. It takes a lot of strength to throw Mia Davis out of your way. You don't see that very often, now the Owls back the other way, trying to initiate a handoff between Gordine and Clinton, and the foul on the play is called on Platanova, getting a little too close. Kyra Wood gets a much-deserved rest as Alexa Williamson re-enters the game. The Owls 0 for their last six from the field, haven't scored in over two minutes, but still hold a four-point lead. Gordine gets to Davis on the near side, tries to swing through and drive, and an offensive foul is called on Mia Davis on the swing through. It looked like one of her elbows got a bit high. That's what the referee calls, and we're going the other way. You can hear by the, the silence of the crowd of well, eh, that's okay. <laughs> that, that was a clear and obvious one, unfortunately. Platanova brings it across the timeline. Gets it to the far side, Secarioli. Her pass is knocked away by Davis, stolen away. It was taken by East. She's grabbed from behind and fouled by Brimo, and the Owls will retake possession. Bit a sloppy basketball here early. Eight turnovers now for the Shockers, just a quarter and a half into the game. Well, when they both average above 15 turnovers a game, we're going to get 30 turnovers total, I think, by the end of this game for sure. It, it's just been difficult. Their passing just hasn't been good. There hasn't been a lot of bounce passes. There hasn't been a lot of good coordinated plays. It's just it, it's sloppy from both teams. 
Mia Davis gets her first rest of the night. Karana Perea re-enters for the Owls. It's Clinton at the top of the key. Left hand dribble, drives into the lane, flips it off for Williamson. Her left handed hook is good. Pretty finish from Williamson. The Owls break the scoring drought and they now lead 27-21 with five minutes to go in the first half. Watch them defeat Asinde here. They got a smaller lineup in for the Owls. Zekioli gets to Asinde at the top. She tries to send it down low to Ansia and her shot is blocked. Kicks back out to Duncan. Her near side three is off the rim, no good. And it's taken by Gordine. She'll take it across the far side. Outlets it to Williamson, catches down low. Right-handed hook now. This one slips off the front rim, no good. 